When the wind could tear tents apart, they slept, not shivering, not trembling, but warm. Outside the world was chaos. Snow cut through the night like knives, and the plains became a sea of white silence. Yet inside those cone-shaped homes, the fire still breathed, steady alive. What if I told you, this wasn't luck, it was design, it was wisdom carved by centuries of storms. While modern homes trap heat behind concrete and glass, theirs danced with the wind. While we fight the cold, they spoke to it, listened to it, and learned to live beside it. This wasn't just survival. It was early climate engineering built not by machines, but by memory, by hands that understood the language of winter. They never built walls to shut nature out. They built partners to live with it. To the native peoples, a home wasn't a box. It was a companion, a shelter that listened, breathed, and moved with the wind. The teepee wasn't dead wood and hide it was alive. A heartbeat inside the storm. Cold air slipped in through the base. Warm breath escaped from the top. And when the storm howled louder, the breathing quickened. The harder the wind blew, the warmer it became. Strange, right? But that's the genius. The storm fed the warmth. What if I told you? This was early aerodynamics. While modern engineers calculate vents and pressure zones, they simply watched the snow, listened to the wind, and learned from it. The teepee didn't fight the storm. It worked with it. It trusted balance, not resistance. That's not just smart design. That's wisdom written in the language of the wind. If a square house is a wall against chaos, then a teepee is a dance with the wind. Its cone shape wasn't just simple, it was smart. The wind didn't crash into it. It slid around it like water around a stone in a river. No hard edges, no sharp corners, just movement flow balance. What if I told you? The storm itself became part of the design. When hurricane winds hit a teepee, they didn't push it down. They pressed it tighter to the ground. Each gust was not an attack. It was a hand steadying the structure and the snow. What looked like a burden became a gift. As it piled up around the base, it formed a ring of white armor, a frozen wall that sealed in the warmth. The heavier the snowfall, the stronger the insulation, the worse the storm, the cozier it became. That's the part most people miss. The teepee didn't just survive the elements, it used them. Every force outside became a function inside. Even the entrance had its logic. Families would turn the doorway depending on the season east in summer for the morning light south or southeast in winter to block the cold winds. A simple turn of a doorway could mean the difference between shivering or sleeping sound. While we design with blueprints and math, they designed with instinct and centuries of watching the sky. They didn't own thermometers, but they read the air. They listened to it. They understood it better than most engineers today. The teepee didn't fight the storm, it borrowed its strength. And in doing so, it became something we've nearly forgotten how to build a home in conversation with the wind. They didn't light fires to fight the cold. They raised them like something alive. Inside every teepee, the hearth wasn't just heat. It was a heart, a slow, steady heartbeat in the middle of the storm. The flame was never large or wild. It was calm, controlled, sacred. They didn't feed it with greed. They nurtured it with discipline. Each log, each ember had a purpose. What if I told you their fire was smarter than most heating systems today? It burned low, deep, and clean, a kind of ancient efficiency. Less smoke, more warmth, a perfect balance between breath and burn. Their fuel wasn't just wood either. Across the plains, trees were scarce. So they turned to something unexpected, the dry remains of bison. Women called it winter gold, light, smokeless, long-lasting. They gathered it in summer, stored it in the narrow gap between the teepee's hides where it stayed dry, ready waiting. It wasn't glamorous, but it worked. That simple mixture of wood dung and care kept the heartbeat alive all through the night. And here's the part that says everything. When the family went to sleep, they never let the fire die. They covered it gently, kept it breathing under a thin layer of ash. By dawn, the coals still glowed red, just enough to wake the flame again. They never wasted a spark. 
not one. Each ember was respected as if it carried a soul of its own. We burn to conquer the cold, they burn to live with it, to understand it, and that that's real warmth. Outside the storm howled like a living beast, but inside, life went on. You could hear its soft, steady human, the sound of a needle-piercing hide, the quiet rhythm of a child's laughter, the low murmur of stories passed from one generation to the next. Smoke curled through the roof like a living thread carrying the smell of roasted meat, fur oil, and pine wood. It wasn't silence in there, it was music, a warm hum of family work and memory. What if I told you? The fire was their internet, and the stories their network. Every spark was a signal, every tale a download of wisdom. Knowledge didn't come from screens, it came from the glow of coals and the voice of the old. While modern storms push us indoors and apart, their blizzards pulled them closer. Each night was a gathering, a lesson, a celebration, a promise that no one faced the cold alone. They didn't just share heat, they shared presence, they shared time and that's what kept them warm. In the modern world, we isolate to stay comfortable. They connected to survive. It wasn't the fur or the fire or even the teepee that kept them alive. It was each other. Because warmth isn't just heat. It's connection. It's memory. It's belonging. Before warmth ever came from fire, it started from within. The native peoples didn't dress for fashion, they dressed for survival. Every layer was knowledge passed hand to hand, season to season. Their clothing was alive with purpose, light, flexible, silent. They wore multiple layers of tanned hides soft on the inside, weatherproof on the outside. Each piece treated with animal fat and smoke, turning it into natural armor against snow and wind. It didn't shine, it didn't tear, it breathed. What if I told you? They could walk through the snow almost soundless. Each step was soft as snow itself, a quiet rhythm learned from the land. While modern boots crunch and echo their moccasins whispered, they learned long ago that in winter noise costs warmth, stillness saves it, and food that was warmth too. They carried pemmican, smoked meat, dried berries, compact energy for endless cold, calories wrapped in wisdom as one elder once said. Every bite was stored sunlight, every meal a memory of summer kept alive through the storm. No wasted motion, no wasted energy, no wasted life. Their systems clothing food shelter were all one conversation with nature. Today we insulate with plastics, heat with wires and still feel cold. They used hide fat and patience and felt peace. Because true warmth doesn't start with the fire, it starts with understanding, it starts inside. Long before they built a fire, they already carried warmth within. Their clothing wasn't fashion, it was function and wisdom. Each piece told a story, every stitch a survival lesson. They layered hides like nature's own, engineering soft fur inside oiled leather outside. Each coat brushed with animal fat, each seam smoked and sealed. Rain slid off it, snow couldn't cling. And yet, it breathed. What if I told you? Their steps were almost silent. Each moccasin kissed the snow softly soft as snow itself. No crunch, no echo. Because silence in a storm meant safety. And every hunter knew warmth leaves with the noise you make. They didn't stomp through winter, they flowed through it. Like wind through grass, like smoke through a tippy's vent. And food that was warmth too. They packed energy into the simplest things, pemmican dried meat berries, tea made from bark and roots. Each bite a quiet miracle, calories wrapped in wisdom. The perfect balance of fat protein and patience designed not by science, but by memory. While modern homes hoard electricity and calories, they carried energy in their bones. Their strength came from preparation, not panic. So yes. Warmth began inside, in what they wore, in what they ate, and in how they understood the cold. Because fire might light the night, but it's the body and the spirit that keeps it burning. In the end, their survival wasn't a miracle, it was knowledge and humility. They didn't fight nature with force, they learned to listen, they studied every gust of wind, every whisper of snow, and in doing so, 
they made peace with the cold. What if I told you they never defeated winter at all? They befriended it. They turned storms into teachers. They turned cold into comfort. While we build walls and blast heaters, they built understanding. They lived with less, and yet they lived better. Every shelter, every meal, every story by the fire was a conversation with the earth itself. And maybe that's the lesson we've forgotten. Warmth isn't only about heat. It's about respect. It's about connection. It's about knowing your place in the storm and still feeling at home. So tonight, when the cold creeps in and you reach for the fire, don't just remember how they survived. Remember why. Remember warmth.